In this video, we're going to talk about how to use Norton's theorem to calculate the current flowing through the load resistor. So let's go ahead and work on this example. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the Norton's resistance. Once we do that, and once we calculate the Norton's current, we're going to draw an equivalent circuit that will look like this. So this right here is the Norton's current, this is the Norton's resistance, and this is the load resistor. And then we'll use this circuit to calculate the current flowing through the load resistor, which we'll call IL. So let's begin by calculating the Norton's resistance. The Norton's resistance is basically the same as the Thevenin's resistance. We would find it the same way. So we're going to replace the independent voltage source with a short circuit and the independent current source will be replaced with an open circuit so we don't need to write anything there and we're going to disconnect the load resistor so we need to find the equivalent resistance across points A and B by the way this should be not a 5 ohm resistor but an 8 ohm resistor so let me just correct that. So we have an 8 ohm resistor, a 3 ohm resistor, and another 3 ohm resistor. So these two resistors are in series. So that's 11. Now we have an 11 ohm resistor in parallel with a 3 ohm resistor. So to calculate the equivalent resistance is going to be 1 over 11 plus 1 over 3 raised to the minus 1. So that is going to be I got 2.357 ohms for the Norton's resistance which is the same as the Thevenin's resistance. So that's the first part. Now we need to calculate the Norton current. To do that, I'm going to disconnect the load resistor. So keep in mind, RL is equal to 6. We'll get back to it later. So right now, we have an open terminal across the 3 ohm resistor. So we're going to call this point B, point A, and point C. So now we need to perform a nodal analysis at point C. So we're going to use Kirchhoff's current law. So we have a current flowing into point C in that direction. Let's call that I1. The 7 amp current, we're going to call it I2. And the current flowing from point C to point A, let's call that I3. So we're going to assign a positive current value for any current that is going towards point C. So I1 and I2 are entering that junction, so those will be positive currents. I3 is leaving point C, so we're going to assign that a negative value. Now keep in mind, according to Ohm's law, the current is the voltage divided by the resistance. So I1 is going to be the voltage across the 8 ohm resistor, which is the potential difference between 100 and VC over the 8 ohm resistor. I2 is simply the 7 amp current source. I3 is going to be the voltage across the 3 ohm resistor, which is VC minus the potential at B, so that's 0. And these two resistors are in series because there's no current flowing through this open circuit. So from C to B, we have a total resistance of 6. And this is going to equal 0. So now, we need to solve for VC. To get rid of the fractions, let's multiply everything by 24. So we have 24 divided by 8, which is 3. So this is going to be 3 times 100 minus VC. And then 24 times 7. Let's see what that's going to be. So that's going to be positive 168. 
and then 24 times negative VC divided by 6, that's going to be negative 4 VC, and that's going to equal 0. So let's distribute the 3. So we're going to have 300 minus 3 VC plus 168 minus 4 VC, which equals 0. So combining like terms, we're going to have 468 minus 7 VC is equal to 0. Moving this to the other side, we have 468 is equal to positive 7 VC. So dividing both sides by 7, we get that the voltage potential at point C, or rather the electric potential to be more specific, it's 468 divided by 7. And so that's going to be 66 0.857 volts. So now that we have the potential at point C, we could use that to calculate the potential at A. Keep in mind the potential at A is equal to the Thevenin voltage. Once we have the Thevenin voltage, we can use that to calculate the Norton's current. Now notice that in this branch, what we have here is a voltage divider. Let's call this R2 and let's call this R3. So to calculate the potential at A, which is basically the Thevenin voltage, that's going to be the potential at C times R3 divided by R2 plus R3. So that's our voltage divider equation. So VC, as we said before, is 66.857. R3 is 3. R2 is 3. So that's 3 over 6, which is 1 half. So VA is half of VC. So half of 66.857 is 33.4285. So that is the Thevenin voltage. Now the Norton current is going to be the Thevenin voltage divided by the Norton resistance. So that's 33.4285 volts divided by 2.357 ohms. So the Norton current is 14.183 amps. So now that we have the Norton's current, we could use this circuit to calculate the current flowing through the load resistor. So this circuit forms a current divider circuit. It's equivalent rather to a current divider circuit. And to calculate the current flowing through RL, it's going to be the Norton current times Rn over Rn plus Rl. So the Norton current, that's 14.183 amps. The Norton resistance is 2.357. And keep in mind, Rl was 6. You can rewind the video if you want to check that. So it's going to be 14.183 times 2.357 divided by 8.357. So the current flowing through the load resistor is 4 amps. So that is the answer. Now let's confirm the answer to make sure that it makes sense. So we calculated a current of 4 amps flowing through the load resistor. So if we set B at a potential of 0 volts, 4 times 6 will give us the potential at A, which is 24 volts. Now 24 volts divided by 3 ohms tells us that we have an 8 amp current flowing through the 3 ohm resistor. 8 amps plus 4 amps gives us a current of 12 amps. 
So we have 12 amps flowing through the 3 ohm resistor. And 3 times 12 is 36. So there's a 36 voltage drop across the 3 ohm resistor. Which means the potential at C is 36 volts higher than the potential at A. So 24 plus 36 will give us a potential of 60 volts at point C. Now, we have 7 amps of current flowing in this direction and 12 going this way. That means that there has to be 5 flowing through the 8 ohm resistor because 5 and 7 will make up to 12. And 5 times 8 is 40. Add in 40 to 60 will give us a potential of 100 at this point, which we can call point D. And that is in agreement with the voltage source. So everything here makes sense in the circuit. So that's basically it. So now you know how to solve a circuit using Norton's theorem.